From its reveal in the 2020 PlayStation 5 showcase, I knew Returnal was something unique and original, something that took risk, something that is seemingly lacking in a lot of today's games. But it was immediately overshadowed by the likes of Spider-Man Miles Morales and Demon's Souls. Good games in their own right, but games connected to already established franchises. But let's be honest, Returnal isn't an entirely welcoming game for everyone, but there is something special to be found within Returnal's ever-changing and challenging gameplay. It's one of the best PlayStation 5 exclusives I can recommend for the system, and with the game now on PC, even more players can join Celine in her never-ending fight for freedom and answers. Returnal is developer Housemark's first AAA title after moving on from their smaller arcade-like games that sadly weren't making enough money for the studio. But this doesn't mean Housemark's signature isn't all over Returnal. In fact, it is. If you look at many of their previous games, you'll find many similarities in its concept. The sci-fi arcade shooter concept from games like Super Stardust HD, Alienation, and Matterfall. Returnal greatly evolves upon this history for the better. It's a more advanced, mature take with a greater emphasis on story and exploration, much larger than anything done previously. Returnal continues Housemark's long-standing relationship with Sony. In fact, thanks to Returnal's decent sales, it convinced Sony to finally take the plunge and purchase the developer outright, something that was honestly greatly overdue. Returnal blends over-the-top arcade-like shooting with action and exploration. If you plan on surviving, exploring each and every single part of the map will be crucial because you need to pick up useful items and plan as you go for the unknown. As a roguelike, it's a game about choices and risk. Your decisions can and likely will affect your outcome, despite skill being involved. Celine can only carry one weapon at a time. You start out with a standard pistol and never know what new weapons you'll come across. It's best to experiment to find what you prefer, but know that you may not always have early access to these and will typically have to switch up to more powerful weapons anyway. Sometimes you don't have a choice and may be forced to carry something you don't like because it's a major step up from the pistol. Parasites sound freaky but can be both helpful and harmful in their attributes. Some are temporary, detaching after its use, but will cause a malfunction that can severely affect Selene, but by completing its goal, the malfunction will be removed. Optional challenge rooms will knit you some better weapons, but there's risk in even partaking in this multi-round fight. In general, a lot of the time you can easily run from area to area without fighting, and certain times doors will be locked because hostiles are combative, forcing you to clear them all, but again, there's risk involved because you will be overlooking plenty of valuable and helpful resources. Environments are vast and varied, each having its own identity and enemies to fight. With the ridiculous amount of time you'll likely be spending within the first biome, the ones that follow are greatly appreciated. Each environment is procedurally generated, but you will become familiar with each section and on what to expect. But this doesn't mean the game will be easy, even on the easiest difficulty. Each environment has its own big boss fight, its finale, and these fights are guaranteed to kick your ass. In fact, you're extremely lucky if you beat any of these bosses on the very first try. This is a game where you have to learn. Enemies have patterns in their projectiles. Knowing when and how to maneuver is key to surviving, and it's ever apparent in boss fights sometimes overwhelming when so much happens on screen. And as each boss is beaten, Selene discovers new equipment, helping her continue further but also allowing her to re-explore areas she couldn't before. On the surface, Returnal is an explorative action game, but underneath, there's psychological horror elements. These take form in the house Selene can explore. When this happens, the game shifts to first person, allowing Selene to explore various rooms depending on what the story allows. It's cryptic, creepy, and a nice break from the action, even surprising once you've explored the house every time you can. In general, I found Returnal to be mood-based, meaning if I was in the mood to devote myself to a longer playthrough or not. At times, I found myself fine with dying over and over again, and other times I just gave up for a while, completely frustrated and tired that I couldn't progress because of a hard boss or the lack of helpful pickups. This is a game where that will happen a lot, but there's also huge relief, a personal reward of accomplishment in getting past whatever obstacle is in your way. And thankfully, me wanting to know more about Celine and how the story will wrap up kept me coming back to the game. I didn't want to give up on it, just need to take my own time with it. Returnal follows Celine Vassos, a lone space pilot in a seemingly distant looking future who disobeys orders and attempts to land on the off-limit planet of Atropos in search of the mysterious White Shadow signal but this results in her crashing onto the planet with her ship completely destroyed. With no other option than to try to signal for help, Selene begins to explore the cryptic planet and discovers a deceased survivor, herself. This only adds to a continuous list of mysteries surrounding Selene's predicament as she finds herself stuck in a time loop, with her every death helping to understand the obstacles and ominous forces she faces. And Selene is one of the most intriguing characters I have ever played as, 
Ultimately, she isn't anything special, and I don't mean that in a bad way, she's an ordinary person. She's a space pilot whose curiosity simply gets the best of her, landing her in a situation she seemingly can't get out of. Her past is dark and damaging, enough so that she would rather hide and forget than confront head on. She's also highly inquisitive and knowledgeable, picking up on her surroundings rather quickly. Finding the strength to survive not only the physical forces that attack her, but also the psychological ones that tend to bring more questions than they do answers. Unlike video game characters today, which again aren't bad, Selene reminds me a lot of how video game characters used to be. Tough and powerful, almost resilient, but with enough humanity and flaws to make her relatable, likable, without dipping into the deep end of true realism. And I like how Selene is portrayed. She is a middle-aged woman and she's resilient in the answers she wants. It doesn't matter what her age is, it doesn't matter what she looks like. I know there were a few people who didn't want to play the game because Selene doesn't have the typical sex appeal most women in video games typically tend to have. Selene is a well-built character and she's relatable in her pain. A lot of Selene's character wouldn't be anything without her voice actress, Jane Perry, who does a terrific job at capturing the emotions Selene goes through in her quest to find answers and escape. Perry gives Selene a rawness in her performance. You want to know what happens next. You want to find the hidden voice logs because it greatly adds to the story, Selene's story, and is almost required to gain the full experience Returnal Story has to offer because it isn't all crystal clear and in your face. There's thought involved. It's a story that will make you think, and that's the beauty of Returnal storytelling. It's almost like showing without really telling the player everything. At the end, you almost need to make your own conclusion based on all the evidence presented. The further Selene progresses through the game, the longer it takes to reach certain goals. The longer it takes, the bigger the risk death becomes, like when you finally reach that environment's big boss. You will die. And if you were a launch player like myself, there was no way to save the game. In fact, it became quite a controversial topic that the game didn't have this feature. Originally, the developers wanted you to play through a biome where the game would save your progress, where new biomes unlocked and permanent gear was discovered, typically after being the boss. But again, these bosses can really be a bitch. Your options were either to be perfect at the game or leave your game and PS5 in its suspended sleep mode. All good until the PS5 has an update or some kind of glitch happens and your progress is lost. So after continuously denying a save feature, the developers thankfully compromise on a suspend feature. So when you use this feature, the next time you start the game, you'll immediately start where you left off, but doesn't act like traditional save data, so you won't be able to use it again. And honestly, this is probably the best way to go because of the game's design. It probably came too little too late for launch players, but regardless, it's a wholeheartedly welcomed and much needed addition because the game can get pretty lengthy the further you get. Though if you're like me, you'll probably die before you ever think about suspending. Returnal suspend function isn't even the game's biggest update. With the added free Ascension update that arrived in early 2022, there's even more of a reason to play Returnal. Not only did they add some additional story content and survival modes, but introduce a new and completely unexpected cooperative multiplayer mode. This can be of extreme help to struggling players who may not be the best playing on their own. Ultimately, it would be best to get someone you know to play online because communication is key, but isn't necessary. Playing with strangers isn't a bad way to go, but like any co-op adventure, it'll always be best to play with someone you know. Someone you can verbally communicate with that will help smooth out your adventure together. But co-op is a great way to get that helpful aid if you're struggling on your own. And this idea of Selene calling on another Selene in another timeline just adds to Returnal's atmosphere. Never once feeling awkward or out of place, but rather fitting. The second part of the Ascension update includes a new survival mode, the Tower of Sisyphus. And this wraps in a new story with a challenging endless mode for high replayability. You can't play the Tower of Sisyphus with a partner, but I found the tower to be a bit easier than the main game. It does get harder the further you go, floor by floor, and the environments will change to reflect this, but the Tower of Sisyphus is faster and quicker. Ultimately, you're trying to go for the high score, keeping up your combo, and reaching the highest number of floors you can. There are new powerful weapons, upgrades come in faster and greatly help out. New exclusive boss fights happen at the end of each environment, and like the mysterious house, now there's a hospital floor Sling can explore. It's a great update that serves its purpose, and also expands upon Selene's lore, and that is always welcome in my book. Returnal is a must-play on the PlayStation 5, and if you're a PlayStation Plus Extra or Premium member, you can download the full game today and try it out for yourself. Now that it's also available on PC, there's even more reason for people to play. From its ever-changing atmosphere, arcade-like gameplay, and the characterization of Selene herself, Returnal is a challenging, sometimes frustrating game, but this challenge is always rewarding. 
Whether you go on this time looping adventure by yourself or with a friend, Returnal is a game like no other. Will you be trying out Returnal? If you have played Returnal, have you enjoyed it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please be sure to like and subscribe for future content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.